What's up guys, my name is Josh and welcome to another headphone review. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Hyphaman slash Mastrop HE35X. This is a dynamic headphone, obviously an open back headphone. Um, and in this review, I'm actually gonna be comparing it a little bit to draw some comparisons to the Philips SHP 9500s, uh, because this is coming in, I think at $90 when it actually is available, although it is out of stock right now. Um, and then also, because it's relatively similarly priced, the uh, H, uh, HD58X. You have this metal headband with the uh, kind of comfort strap, which I th actually think is a very, fairly um, comfortable mechanism. I actually do like this headband strap. Not everybody does, but I think it's okay. Uh, the ear pads, they fit my ears, but they are on the smaller end and my ears are too. So if you have medium or large size ears, those may not fit. And the pads on here are not super easily replaced, so keep that in mind. You have a dual connector at the bottom. Speaking of that, I've actually been using a balanced periap cable to the THX 789. Overall, these are pretty lightweight, like they don't really weigh much. Uh, they feel pretty solid for now, but I haven't really had them for that long. And this build type that they tend to go with, Heifman at least, uh, in my opinion, it, it does last a long time, but it doesn't necessarily age well. The hinges usually get a little loose, the headband kind of gets scratched up, and this uh, head strap does uh, deteriorate over time, but I can't verify that necessarily with this particular unit. It is just something to think about. So power requirements, these are a 19 ohm headphone, but, but they do have a sensitivity of 93 decibels per milliwatt. You don't need a nuclear reactor or anything like that, just something that can power the 93 decibel sensitivity level. All right, now the sound quality. Now this headphone is a good headphone in a lot of different areas, but unfortunately it does have one fatal flaw. But we'll talk about that in a second. Let's go ahead and talk about bass response. So when you're talking about sub bass, uh, the 20 to 50 Hertz range, there is a little bit there. It's definitely not devoid in that area and it will give you kind of a, you know, a real low down sound uh, for sure. But where this headphone shines is actually the mid bass to the lower mid range. There's a little bit of a hump there and you're gonna get really impressive male vocals. They're gonna come across really powerful. This is a fairly detailed headphone in both the bass response and the mid-range. And to draw a real quick comparison to the SHP 9500s, um, the 9500s have a decent amount of mid-bass, uh, but this actually is boosted up a little bit more than that. But what the 9500s have that the 35X does not have is actually a little bit of shoutiness in the upper ranges of vocals. So, you know, in between that 700 to about 2000 range, this takes a little bit of a dip and this leaves female vocals uh, not feeling quite as powerful as they could, but it also doesn't have that shoutiness factor, which depending on who you are, what you like in your vocals, that can either be a good thing or a bad thing. But overall for vocals, I'm really impressed with this thing. It doesn't quite have the intimacy of the 9500s uh, for that vocal presence, but it definitely feels a little bit thicker and a little bit fuller bodied than the 9500s. And uh, you know, something that not every headphone can do really well is texturize deep male vocals. Um, you know, there's kind of a fine line between having a powerful and clear sound and having like a, a an overly bassy, not reference, you know, boomy, muddy uh, male vocals. And that's what I think a lot of headphones under, under $100 really end up having. The strong exceptions to those rules would be like the Emotique Purple Hearts or, uh, you know, the Creative Arvon Elize, which are close to the same headphone, the 9500s and the 35Xs. Those are all great examples of headphones that can really do male vocals really, really well without being totally overblown. All right, so, so far, pretty good. Gets my recommendation for the bass response. Could be a little bit higher in the sub bass regions, but I won't complain too much about that. So lower mid range, actually even to the upper mid range, fairly good. But the fatal flaw of this headphone is sibilance. So this is the main reason why I actually brought up the SHP 9500s here for a comparison. So um, the SHP 9500s, and this is not the S version, it's just the 9500s. These are a really good under $100 headphone, but they have one major flaw which is the sibilance. And that sibilance is gonna bug some people more than others. And, and I think that sibilance is a big part of the reason why this headphone is so controversial. Now, I can take the sibilance on here. I'm not a huge fan of it. I do not always enjoy it, but I think overall this headphone is worth listening to uh, despite the sibilance. The sibilance on here is boosted substantially more than on the SHP 9500s 
it affects T's, it affects S's even more. Just for a visual example here, you can actually see this on Massdrop or Drops website. That 3000 to 6000 range is boosted about 10 to 20 decibels higher than the surrounding frequencies. And you can really hear that. And the reason why I bring the 58X's up is because I'm gonna show you the frequency response graphs from there. I think these are measured on the same rig. They definitely have the same structure on the actual graph. And you can see just how much higher that frequency range is on the 35X. Granted, the 58X is almost twice the cost, but I'm really just showing this more of a visual example to explain what I'm telling you. All right, so sibilance is going to be the fatal flaw of this headphone. Other than that, it's actually pretty good. So the air frequencies of the treble is pretty nice. The imaging and the soundstage are maybe not class leading at this price range, but certainly nothing to complain about in my opinion. It actually has sound staging capabilities on par with the 9500s in my opinion, although not quite as intimate in, uh, in terms of total closeness. It can't quite really get that kind of in your head sound. It kind of just sounds, you know, about here to out here. So this leads me into the conclusion. If there's a way to get rid of that trouble region and bring it down like 10 to 20 decibels, um, this would actually make a pretty formidable opponent in the sub $100 category. Unfortunately, the trouble leads me to not be able to recommend this unless you're really insensitive to those specific frequencies to where they don't bug you at all. Uh, right in that area, it's just really painful for me personally, so it's really hard for me personally to recommend. So I think that's gonna wrap it up. Thanks Master Rock for sending this out. Of course, uh, they didn't ask, otherwise try and influence me uh, to give this a good review or a bad review as you can probably see. So you can check these out in the link description down below, but I'll also leave a link to the 35X, which is a great headphone, and the 9500s if you are interested because they are now, uh, or again, available on Amazon. All right, guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up. You can follow me on all my social media accounts, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, if you do wanna consider financially supporting what I do to get early access to videos exactly like this one. All right, spiel's over. My name's Josh, signing off.